Hey, 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 and welcome to Marco's Motorcycle Nation. Thank you so much for being a part of our channel and being a part of our show right here on YouTube. I do appreciate that as we try to make our way to 10,000 subscribers. Is it a pipe dream? I don't think so. Uh, you guys have been uh, hitting that subscribe button, so I do appreciate you very much. I really do. It means so much to me to uh, to get a following here and to bring you uh, the biker news each and every day, keep you up to date so that you uh, can go out and be well-informed. That's what the channel is all about. So thank you, thank you, thank you for spending time here on my channel. Make sure you do hit subscribe if you haven't done that yet. We're going to be having a bunch of cool stuff here uh, on our YouTube channel. And, of course, you can always forward this to somebody and say, hey, man, subscribe to this guy. Uh, he's, uh, he's got some good uh, stuff every, every once in a while. Anyway, uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you. It is uh, already Tuesday, July 11, 2023. We've got a couple of different stories working here. There's a lot going on. But first, something that really concerns me here, uh, and I kind of told you with a few videos back about the uh, mainstream media and how they're going to start to manipulate uh, public sentiment about what's going on in motorcycle clubs and what they're calling motorcycle gangs, the G word that I just can't stand, uh, because that's the first element to try to turn public trust and public opinion away from motorcycle clubs. And let me just tell you something. When the court of public opinion changes on you, when you get thrown under the bus and everybody in the public starts to be wary and, uh, and not about what you're doing, that's when you start to see new laws uh, you start to see uh, congressmen and senators and, and local uh, people trying to pass laws. That's when you start to see big change. It's one thing when the politicians and the police departments and you know all the people that uh, get involved usually first start to label you as a gang, label you as a nuisance, uh, get the public to be uh, afraid of you. But once the public turns on you, you have a major problem and we are right in the middle of what is going on here so uh, let me get to this first piece because uh, it's pretty important and you'll be able to tell right away what we're talking about right here it was around 2 a.m monday when flames erupted on an otherwise quiet brockville street Brockville firefighters were still hard at work just before noon containing the fire. Police say the owner of the building was affiliated with the Outlaws Motorcycle Gang. Because of the ownership of the building and who owns it, there's a heightened awareness to our investigation for sure. Uh, but at this point, we, we don't have an actual link that we can confirm right now. According to Cornwall Police, a violent altercation broke out there Saturday night between the Outlaws and another rival biker gang, the Loners, where two people were stabbed and one was shot. Cornwall police have since arrested five individuals involved in the incident. Although Brockville police wouldn't comment on links between the two cases, the deputy fire chief says the fire has been labeled suspicious. The cause right now is undetermined, um, but we are uh, conducting a formal investigation with Brockville police and the Ontario Fire Marshal's office who will be joining us in a couple hours. The smell of smoke in the air and the charred debris are now all that remains of the building that once stood at 109 Perth Street. But this could have been a much larger tragedy. We evacuated some of the residents in the, in the area because the fire did ultimately spread from that building to multiple other residences just adjacent to it. 17 of the nearby houses were damaged by the heat. The fire caused over $4 million in damages. There were three fire marshals present at the scene Monday as they searched for a cause and any possible links to biker activity continues. Fawaz Mohammed Youssef, Global News, Brockville. Do not approach OPP. Warn public as biker gang violence erupts in eastern Ontario. Now, this has to do uh, with uh, the story we covered yesterday on our show. Uh, there was a fight between the loners MC and uh, the uh, outlaws. Uh, eyewitnesses say that a few uh, loners were uh, on their bikes, four of them. Uh, then the, some outlaws rolled up uh, at a bar late at night. Uh, there was eight to 12 of them, according to eyewitnesses and the report. The fight happened, a uh, pretty big one. Two people were stabbed. One person was shot. They were, all were taken to the Ottawa uh, County Hospital. And then uh, just a few hours later, the Outlaws Clubhouse uh, in a city about 60 miles away that we're learning uh, burnt down to the ground. Uh, now they are, uh, we'll read this a little bit later on in our cast here, uh, saying that that is arson. And of course, those two things are connected according to reports. But we get to this first because this is really the most concerning. So uh, in lieu of all that, uh, what happens? Well, the Ontario police 
uh, I guess, released this memo that tells the general public to do not approach people in motorcycle clubs. It's insane. Police are now treating the Brockville fire, that's the uh, city that the Outlaws Clubhouse was in, as arson comes less than two days after Outlaws biker gang violence in Cornwall. That is the subtitle here of the story. OPP says people should avoid engaging with members of biker gangs after violence broke out between two rival motorcycle clubs, if they just contradict themselves right there, in eastern Ontario this week, as we continue to read the articles word for word here. Uh, the situation is serious enough that the OPP is even cautioning people not to wear gang-related clothing as it could make them targets of biker violence. They're talking about any sort of uh, support gear or uh, anything that uh, even has the insignias of uh, any motorcycle clubs on it. Saturday evening, police say a fight between biker gangs in Cornwall, Ontario. The outlaws and the loners left three people injured, two stab wounds and another gunshot wound. Uh, and keep in mind, uh, Canada has some of the strictest gun laws and yet here we are. Uh, less than two days later, the outlaws hangout in Brockville, Ontario, was severely burned in a fire that spread to a nearly a dozen other homes in the area. Now, as of Tuesday morning, Brockville police are treating the second incident as an arson investigation, and the OPP Biker Enforcement Unit is assisting in both of these investigations. Five people have been arrested since uh, the shooting in Cornwall, but no arrests have been announced in the Brockville arson investigation as of yet. Brockville police say that they're uh, as of Tuesday of about 12.45 p.m., so just a little bit earlier today, they had no updates on the investigation, and the office of the fire marshal was still at the site looking into the cause of the blaze. OPP is asking people not to engage with bikers. This is how the end starts. The court of public opinion gets swayed on you. It is almost impossible to get from underneath that. They released information Tuesday about both incidents and told people in Ontario to be wary of engaging with any bikers, not just MC members. Uh, outlaw motorcycle gangs, as they say here, members are known to carry weapons and engage in violent behavior. All of them. See how they just do that nice, fresh sweep of everybody there? If you encounter an OMG member, do not approach them, OPP said in a news release. They are scaring the public is what they're doing. Although Brockville and Cornwall police, uh, as well as OPP, have stopped short of saying that the two incidents are connected, it's clear that police are taking the string of incidents involving biker gangs seriously. OPP are specifically asking residents to avoid wearing any biker-related clothing out of fear that it may make them a target in potential gang violence. Nothing scares the regular person as much as if you wear that, you're probably going to get sucked into a gang war. Incredible that they would even put this in a memo. Uh, there's always the potential for violence because these groups carry guns and they're involved in violent crime and utilize violence to enforce some of their own rules, Wade said. According to Wade, who's with the OPP, he's been working in motorcycle investigations for the last two decades. A large-scale biker violence like the events seen in eastern Ontario over last week. Incidents spill over into the community. It's not a common occurrence. But the loners and the outlaws do share a turf. The outlaws have had a presence in Brockville and eastern Ontario for years, and the loners are an Ontario-based group unaffiliated with any larger biker gangs, Wade said, according to this report here. There's a history there between these two clubs, he said. Uh, still, Wade said conflict between biker gangs is not completely out of the ordinary and shouldn't be a cause for major concern for the wider community. I always love how they say, if you wear this, you're possibly going to be sucked into a biker gang violence. And then they come back a half a paragraph later and say, well, it shouldn't be a major concern for the wider community. I, I mean, I, I swear the uh, irony is incredible. While I don't see a huge elevated risk to the public, I don't. We have to be aware, he said. This is why Wade and the OPP's biker gang unit threw its best uh, to ask the community to avoid wearing gang paraphernalia at this time. They're not uh, the cool gangs you see on TV. They are criminal organizations. Why did you even make that quote? I don't know. So look, uh, what are they doing? They are trying to turn everybody against motorcycle clubs. They start by calling them gangs. They go ahead and put all this information out there. They tell you they're not the cool ones on TV, that these are the uh, worst ones, and these ones will... Uh, do bad things. They ca all carry guns and they all are, are violent and they all do crazy stuff. And you and I know uh, if you see an MC out, as long as you're respectful, I've never seen an MC to the general public do something 
out of hand. That, that, does that mean it hasn't happened? I'm probably sure maybe somewhere, but I've never seen it. Uh, if you come to a motorcycle club uh, or guys on bikes, generally speaking, and as long as you are pretty cool and you uh, are respectful, they're probably some of the nicest people on planet Earth, to be honest with you. Uh, the bikers that I know, the guys in the MCs that I know, 1% clubs and other clubs, they raise money for charity. They try to help out when they can. They're some of the most giving people uh, that are around. So to be painted like this, it's only done for one reason, because they want you to be scared of these bikers and these MCs and what they're calling gangs because it fits their narrative, and now they'll be able to start passing legislator like they've already done in Canada and, and look at Australia. That's the levels. Australia, now Canada, and pretty soon the United States. All going to follow suit and trying to sweep all this into one small, nice little package so that if you ride a motorcycle in a motorcycle club, it will be unbearable for you in the next few years. Trust me on that. Thank you very much for joining us here on tonight's episode. I appreciate you standing by. You can always hit share, like, comment. I love all the comments. I try to answer everybody individually. You can always hit me up at Nation at gmail.com as well. I got a lot of emails that I'm trying to get back to uh, here from a lot of people asking questions, which is pretty cool. You can always leave a comment there, and uh, I will respond as always. Thank you very much for being right here. We'll have more biker news, and we'll keep you up to date each and every day here on Marco's Motorcycle Nation. Have yourself a great Tuesday night.